Hey guys, NeuroGal MD here. I'm a neurologist. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about Ginkgo Biloba. Ginkgo Biloba is a popular supplement. In fact, it's one of the highest selling herbal supplements in the world. People consume it for a variety of medicinal purposes, but one of the common reasons people consume it is for its reported ability to enhance memory and mental function. So in this video, I'm going to discuss whether there's any evidence to support the claim that ginkgo improves memory. I'm also going to touch on ginkgo's effects on a few other neurological and psychiatric illnesses. Stick around for the end of the video because I'm also going to discuss important safety concerns about ginkgo. Now, ginkgo biloba has been around for a really long time. It's a supplement extracted from the leaf of the ginkgo tree, which traces back to approximately 300 million years. In fact, the ginkgo tree is one of the oldest surviving tree species known to humans, hence its nickname, the living fossil. The ginkgo tree died out in Europe during the Ice Age, but survived in Asia, where it eventually was used for medicinal purposes. Initially, the seeds of the ginkgo were used to create a tea meant for a variety of ailments, but most particularly asthma and other respiratory illnesses. Then, in the 1950s, German scientists began studying the medicinal benefits of the leaf of the tree, which are how modern preparations of ginkgo are made. Therefore, the modern preparations of ginkgo are actually different from those used in traditional Chinese preparations. Another interesting fact about ginkgo is that it, its seed contains a neurotoxin called 4-methoxyperidoxine, or MPN, whereas the ginkgo leaf does not. It's thought that ginkgo enhances cognition by directly stimulating neurons in the brain and protecting neurons from injury. However, in order to answer the question of whether ginkgo actually improves memory, we need to recognize that a supplement's ability to improve your cognition likely depends on a couple of things. Number one, your baseline cognitive functioning, and number two, your age. So the cognitive functioning of a person with Alzheimer's dementia is vastly different from that of a healthy young individual. And the cognitive functioning of a healthy young individual may be different from that of an older individual without dementia. Supplements like ginkgo may affect different groups of people differently. Let's break down ginkgo biloba's effectiveness at memory enhancement into three populations: Those with Alzheimer's dementia or any other type of dementia, older individuals without dementia, and then young, healthy individuals with no evidence of measurable cognitive impairment. Numerous double-blinded placebo-controlled studies have found that ginkgo is effective for dementia. In one study, the areas in which ginkgo biloba was found to be most effective included apathy or indifference, anxiety, irritability or mood lability, depression or dysphoria, and sleep or nighttime behavior. One study even found ginkgo to be as effective as the Alzheimer's drug donepezil. Donepezil is a medication commonly used for people with dementia. It's important to note though that donepezil does not prevent progression of dementia. It only decreases the speed of memory loss and based on the current literature, its effects at improving memory in people with dementia is modest at best. In contrast to all these positive ginkgo studies, there are also large studies that show that ginkgo extract is not effective for dementia. The largest randomized clinical control trial to date, which is a six-year clinical study funded by the National Institutes of Health, of over 3,000 people aged 75 or older, showed no effect for ginkgo in preventing dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Furthermore, a large review of over 30 clinical trials found inconsistent and unconvincing evidence that ginkgo had any benefits in individuals with dementia or cognitive impairment. So what's my consensus? The data on ginkgo's ability to improve memory in people with dementia is conflicting. It may improve some aspects of memory according to some high quality studies. However, the largest studies and reviews have found no significant benefit in improving memory in people with dementia or preventing dementia. A total of eight trials involving seniors with mildly impaired memory that was thought to be age related found some sort of improvement in cognitive function after taking ginkgo. However, I found five other studies that showed no significant benefit in regular consumption of ginkgo. Also, the positive studies 
or inconsistent in the type of memory that improved with ginkgo. For instance, one study would find that ginkgo improved memorization of a set of numbers, but no improvement in expanding the total number of numbers memorized, while another study would find the exact opposite. So this lack of reproducibility weakens the evidence of these positive studies. What is my consensus? Although evidence is mixed with regard to ginkgo's effects on memory in older individuals without dementia, the lack of reproducible effects in the positive studies means there's really no consistent evidence that it helps older healthy adults. One study funded by Schwab Pharmaceuticals in 2011 found that compared to placebo, there is special standardized ginkgo extract called EGB761 improved memory recall in healthy middle-aged adults. Another study in 2016, again funded by the same pharmaceutical company, found that ginkgo extract improved cognitive flexibility, which is the ability to transition from one task to another, in other words, multitasking. However, in this particular study, Ginkgo did not improve attention or concentration or prospective memory, which is being able to remember to perform a future planned task. Another review of 10 different studies in healthy individuals found no significant effects on memory, executive function, or attention. What is my consensus on healthy, young, and middle-aged people when it comes to Ginkgo? Well, there are several studies on Ginkgo that demonstrate memory improvements in young, healthy adults. These were funded by a company that tested its own standardized formulation of ginkgo and therefore may be susceptible to bias. Of course, pretty much all pharmaceutical companies do the same thing and fund their own studies of their own patented medications. So keep that in mind as well. The remaining studies on ginkgo were either negative or failed to reproduce similar positive benefits. So based on the available data, it's really unclear whether ginkgo enhances certain aspects of memory in young adults. However, if it does, the benefits are minimal at best. Ginkgo has been studied, albeit less rigorously, on other neurological and psychological ailments. It turns out that ginkgo extract may minimize PMS symptoms. One double-blinded placebo-controlled study of 143 women found that compared to placebo, ginkgo significantly relieved major PMS symptoms, especially breast pain and emotional disturbance. Another randomized controlled trial of 85 university students found the same thing, that ginkgo significantly reduced PMS symptoms. Ginkgo could also potentially minimize anxiety. A single study that I found of 107 people with some sort of anxiety disorder found that ginkgo decreased anxiety levels significantly more than placebo. Ginkgo can also potentially improve vertigo or dizziness. I found a single double-blinded trial of 70 people with various vertigo conditions and it found that ginkgo is more effective at alleviating symptoms compared to placebo. Several studies were performed on ginkgo's effects on those with tinnitus or ringing in the ear. These studies show mixed results. Some small studies found benefit, but the studies that were the largest and had the best quality showed no significant improvements. So based on these results, ginkgo likely does not affect tinnitus. Of course, most of these categories that I just discussed have only been studied in a handful of studies, which makes it difficult to come to any conclusive consensus about ginkgo's effects on these ailments. Overall, ginkgo appears to be safe for most people. In a small amount of people, it could produce some unwanted side effects such as nervousness, headaches, stomach upset, and allergic skin reactions. Allergic skin reactions are typically minor if they occur, but a single reported case was severe and it led to a life-threatening skin reaction called Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is a severe allergic skin reaction that leads to severe blistering and skin loss. Ginkgo can also increase the risk of bleeding and it can interact with 
blood thinning medications. So people who are at high risk for bleeding, such as those on blood thinners or with bleeding disorders should probably avoid it. Ginkgo extract can also interfere with certain medications like those taken for diabetes or blood pressure or even seizure medications. Um, and then on top of that, it can potentially increase the risk of seizures in those with epilepsy. Rarely, ginkgo has been associated with electrolyte abnormalities, more specifically low sodium levels, and this can cause nausea, fatigue, confusion, and headache. Also, really important, ginkgo might interfere with fertilization and conception, so people who are trying to conceive should probably avoid it. One last thing, you guys, it's really important to note that not all supplements are created equally. Certain brands can be spiked with compounds from plants other than ginkgo. Um, most clinical trials standardize their ginkgo extract to 24% flavanol glycosides and 6% terpene lactones. And look for this on the labels. Even if it does say this on the labels, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. It would be best really for all supplements to find testing from third party labs. Don't just consider the highest rated or most expensive products on Amazon. Even those can spike their supplements with non-active compounds. Based on my research, my top pick for brands that offer ginkgo extract is the one that Life Extension sells. FYI, I am not sponsored by Life Extension. I'm not an affiliate. I have no conflict of interest uh, when it comes to this. So the reason why I say that is because it has been tested by third party labs to have the correct concentrations of flavanol glycosides and terpene lactones. And it also provides the dose most commonly used in clinical trials that test ginkgo. This is NeuroGal MD. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do and want more content like this, please hit that like button and please make sure to subscribe for more incredible videos about brain health. Take care of yourselves and we'll catch you next time.